Hello again, I'm Blunty. That's the Nikon D4, and in the previous video, I looked at what it could do in video mode. Today, it's time to look at its core purpose for existing in the world, snapping stunning stills. So let's start off with stills where I left off with the video, Nikon's famous low light performance. Now I've seen tests and measurements and comparisons online that suggest the D4's low light performance is as near as makes no practical difference the same as its predecessor, the D3S. So if you're upgrading directly from the D3S, you won't see any real improvement, or to put it in the glass half full perspective, you won't lose any of that beloved performance in dim light. And the old joke about a Nikon being able to take a crystal clear photograph of the inside of its own lens cap can still be thrown about. But if you're coming to the D4 from pretty much any other camera out there, prepare to meet the joy of remarkable low light performance. For perspective, it's so good that all of these shots were done at shutter speeds fast enough to go handheld. I didn't need, or indeed use, a tripod for long exposures to get this much light sucked into the camera. And take it from me, that's impressive. So let's head indoors for some contrived testing. Say hello to Optimus Prime and his little buddies, and if you've seen my previous video, you'll already know that this whole scene is lit by a single tiny tea light candle. As we step up through the ISO range, you'll notice, well, pretty much nothing, really. In fact, up until ISO 6400, there's no noticeable noise at all. After that, it remains manageable and things don't fall apart until you pass the native ISO range and get into the boosted ISO modes where, well, yeah, predictably things fall apart rather dramatically. Dynamic range is impressive too, especially when shooting in RAW, but you've also got Nikon's quick and easy exposure bracketing mode, so you can prepare a set of exposures for creating HDR images on a complete whim at a snap of a finger. But there is a built-in HDR mode too, but you know, I suspect most pros will prefer to bake their own. Detail, even in challenging conditions, remains impressively sharp, and colours are fateful and well saturated with excellent contrast, but you know, with a camera at this end of the scale, that's pretty much a given. In every single environment, in every conceivable kind of lighting, from the harshest of Aussie midday sun to the dim glow of a reptile house, the D4 didn't break stride once. There was nothing I could throw at it that managed to make it so much as flinch, much less let me down. And although this will depend much on the lens, of course, that full frame sensor lets you punch out your subject by letting you roll off the background blur in a beautifully shallow depth of field, and with a good lens that bokeh is just beautiful. And the continuous burst mode will rattle shots off at 10 frames per second with full autofocus in tow, and it will keep that up for a very long time indeed, so long as your memory card is fast enough to keep up with the huge buffer. The D4 is impressive in every way. The ergonomics are well thought out. It's designed to lay as much power, flexibility, and capability at your fingertips as fast as possible. I was adjusting settings and approaches faster than any other camera I've ever touched. And you know, I'm not ashamed to say this. I ran out of talent long before the D4 ran out of ability to accommodate it. If I'm honest, the D4 isn't as fun to shoot with as some other gear I've got, but it's not supposed to be. This is a serious camera for serious shooters who make their living from squeezing the shutter. But for those who have a reason and a need to own a Nikon D4, oh my word, feel free to feel a twinge of envy for them, because it's an extremely nice experience to shoot with and will keep up with tasks that other gear would wet their own camera bags over. In short, it's a nice camera, folks. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.